Hey everybody, Ryan Telgenik here from GamesRadar.com, and I'm here with... Uh, hi, Chris McQuinn from Drinkbox Studios. And... I'm Graham Smith from Drinkbox Studios. And today we're going to check out uh, Guacamole, Melee, Melee, however, whichever, your, uh, <laughs> whichever your choice is. That's always a tough word to say, but uh, yeah, let's hop into the game here. Awesome. And uh, how long have you guys been working on this now? Uh, so I'd say we're probably been working on it for about a year and a half. Uh, we maybe started some initial concept ideas about two years ago, but production really picked up about a year and a half ago or about a year ago. Okay. Uh, for anybody unfamiliar with uh, what the game is, can you kind of just give us a rundown of uh, what's going on? Yeah, for sure. Um, so essentially the game is a platform brawler, and you play as Juan. Uh, he's basically a down and out of his luck agave farmer. And through serendipity and fate, you basically gain a mask that allows you to become a luchador and, you know, save the world. Awesome. Yeah. I just I just tried rolling through those vines, but instead I turned into a chicken. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that often happens. Uh, yeah. So chicken power is actually one of uh, one of the powers you can gain through the game. Uh, essentially, besides being awesome, just because you're a chicken, it allows you to get through small spaces. I see. And now, uh, what's going on with these warp portals here? Yeah. So uh, the whole game it consists of two dimensions: the world of the living, the world of the dead. Uh, in order to get through these from one dimension to the other, you can go through the portal. Uh, and later on in the game, you gain the ability to swap. Uh, and here we get some initial combat going. Uh, the game's heavily focused on combat. Uh, you're doing much better than Grandma. <laughs> he made the game, so. Just tossing skeletons around. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so the game is combat focused, and you've got a bunch of power moves. You can toss guys all over the place. Uh, it's a pretty good ass kicking brawler. That's cool. And this is uh, Jasmine from Aladdin. Uh, yeah, we got the IP <laughs> to bring her in. No, <laughs> don't say that. Uh, she's one of the hench women or hench men. Uh, her name's Shabai. She's very saucy. I can tell that by the way she's moving. She's, oh, wow. She's very saucy. She's got a lot of attitude. A lot of hip action there with <laughs> Shabai. Uh, she's basically telling you you have no chance and to turn back now. Heavy petting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She enjoys her double entendres. Nice. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the uh, the uh, Mexican influence? Yeah. Uh, of the theme here. So our animator, who's from Mexico, put forward the idea. Hey guys, why don't we have our main character Lucio and base our enemies uh, and a lot of the story on Mexican folklore and culture? We, uh, we started to look at it and thought, man, this is awesome. Uh, so we, that's what we've done here. Yeah, there, yeah, I mean, we were talking about this earlier, but there's just like, there aren't really a whole lot of games that kind of explore that, uh, that kind of space, you know? So that's really cool. Yeah, th there really isn't. So it's, it's been refreshing for us. You know, we always want to put out something that's fairly unique and new for people. Uh, and so this is a really good way to go about doing that. So how come I'm, I just turned red oh, a second ago? Yeah, so okay, so basically you have power moves and every time you use a power move you burn one of your uh, stamina chunks. And that's those uh, yellow squares up in the, oh, oh geez. You got it. <laughs> you're, just, you're just leaving Graham behind here. All right. You gotta, <laughs> <laughs> the t the oh, time you jump. Coordinate. One, two, three, go. <laughs> oh, I got you on it last time, but not this time. You're too smart. Uh, and here you just broke a block with your headbutt. Uh, so every power move has a color associated with it. Uh, and if that block has that color, it requires that special power move to bring it. Uh, the, so there are uh, several power moves in the game? Yeah, I'd say throughout the game you gain about 10 special moves. Uh, and here's some of the stuff we can buy. Oh yeah. A pile driver? Yeah, Let's get that. Will. Yeah, you will. <laughs> uh, yeah, so throughout the game you gain pesos and uh, you, uh, you can go to the bank at any point. Those are the checkpoints and buy yourself some pretty awesome upgrades. Wow. What is this thing? Uh, this fella <laughs> here is, uh, well, obviously he's a monster of sorts, but he's called an alabrije. Uh, essentially, there are these really crazy creations created by uh, an artist in Mexico who went out and had these fever dreams and sort of conjured up these animals in his mind. And, and then came back and drew them? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so we're, uh, we're borrowing on that. How so? And so here you're trying, yeah. This actually is an arena demonstrates how sometimes enemies can only do damage in one dimension. Here you can see he's shaded black and you can't damage yeah. him, he can damage you, but yeah. Right. And I have to use a, I have to use one of the power moves to even get up into that portal. Yeah. Which is cool. It. So that becomes a pretty important element of the platforming later on? Sure. 
Uh, so all your power moves, in addition to being moves in combat, there are also moves you can use in platforming. So you can see, as you were doing there, you're using the uppercut as almost a double jump. Ah, oh, I see. Uh, oh yeah, you, you and your bashing some barrels there while Graham's doing the hard work. <laughs> <laughs> barrels don't fight that. <laughs> and they give you money. It's true, they're way better than that. I mean. Uh, yeah, so you can see the thermal counters. That's cool too, because uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Oh, ouch! Right. I'm pretty sure earlier I, I threw a guy and, and Graham caught him. Yeah, just like <laughs> right that. there, <laughs> and tossed him again. That's really awesome. Yeah, so you can air juggle enemies for a while if you want. Oh, he turned red. I, should, I assume that's bad news. Yeah, so uh, every red, whenever Don't. an enemy has a red attack, that's the only attack that's undodgeable in the game. Oh, I see. Here we go. Boom! Got more pesos. Yeah, okay, so these we have to roll through. Oh, perfect. You're, you're an old pro at that. <laughs> and there's the, there it is. Yeah, there's the Alabri hat. <laughs> He's a deep sleeper. <laughs> oh, thank God, we just ran up his back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Who's this goat guy? Well, uh, exactly, so this goat guy Ooh. is essentially your, uh, your version of a crabby Yoda. Uh, so he'll always give you a power. Well, at least he's smoking a pipe. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> That's how you know he means serious business. Wow. Really that was quite the transformation. Yeah, so he has these statues that you continuously break throughout the game and it kind of pisses him off. So. <laughs> I wonder if that transformation hurts for him. <laughs> I think it's, like, as he gets older, arthritis makes it worse. <laughs> it's like, ah, osteoarthritis. Oh, now we got wall jumps. Uh, yeah, there you go. And so now with the wall jump, you'll be able to access some new parts of the game that you didn't access before. So is there ever, uh, ever kind of like a Metroidvania type of element where you can backtrack for treasures or anything like that? Oh, for sure. The game is a ton of it. Um, you'll often in the early parts of the game, you'll come across areas where you know you can get past this block. You just don't have the ability for it. Uh, so if you go back, you'll be able to get past these areas and you'll find some new treasure to either upgrade your health or upgrade your stamina or gain more money. Oh man, so like this part was actually really tricky. Nice I mean, job, yes. <laughs> I, I played through that section earlier and I could not figure it out for a bit. So I'm imagining that the platforming gets really, really, really intense later on. Uh, yeah, I mean, we we try to scale it as the player gains, uh, gains some experience with how the platforming works. Uh, and there is a hard mode that can get unlocked once you finish the game. And uh, how does that work? Uh, well, essentially you finish the game and you have the option for hard mode. And if you do hard mode, we change the arenas so you fight different enemies and we also make the platforming uh, a bit more challenging by removing sort of pivotal safe spots that you could have rested on during normal mode. Ah, uh, I see. So you get rid of all the non-essential. You got it. And we make you be a real pro. Cram's uh. lagging to be <laughs> He's being brave. Uh, oh god. I like how that uh, really builds it up because you're like, I can't go anywhere, and then it finally yeah, yeah. breaks off some of that. Oh, nice. Oof. I wonder if I can get this treasure. Oh, <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> that was really close. Uh-oh. Oh, wow. You guys both did it the hard way. Well done. Oh, here's another one of those sections. Got to wait for them. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And awesome Mario reference. <laughs> Mario reference? Whatever could you be talking about? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, nice job, guys. Great. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, be sure to check out in the coming months for Guacamelee's release. And uh, thank you, Chris and Graham, for joining us today. And uh, we'll check you all next time. Adamgamesradar.com. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Ryan.